beautiful faces, all in red, men and women. We really appreciate you all being here every year for this. It is institutionalized in the city of Columbia that we're going to celebrate um, and bring awareness for Go Red Columbia Day today, February 2nd, 2024. And with that, I am going to immediately hand out off to our wonderful mayor, who has set it off for real with this tie. Can we give him some applause uh, for this? I see you, Mayor Rickman. So greetings and special presentation, Mayor Daniel Rickman. Good morning, everybody, and it's a special day as we celebrate Heart Month, and you know, for a lot of us, it's all personal. You know, we talk a lot about statistics, and I can sit up here and tell you, you know, this is the number one disease that kills people in America, but it really hits home. My father died when he was 41 from heart disease, and today, with the advancements in research and where we are today, he'd probably be still be alive. But it makes you realize more important why we need to take care of ourselves and why we need to get checked. We had a good friend of ours who is a young father, two young kids, felt, didn't feel good, kept pushing off going to the doctor, kept pushing off going to the doctor until his wife said, you got to go. He went to the doctor. They found 90% blockage. 35 years old now, 35 years old, works out every day in great shape. So it doesn't matter if you work out every day, if you think you got to go get checked. It's more important than ever for us, and that's why red dress is important, right? It's important that we keep talking about it. And we talk about it a lot in the month of February, but the reality is we need to be talking about it every day. And as, as we embark as a city to improve quality of life of our citizens, make sure we have more exercising opportunities. We got some great announcements coming out this spring about some outdoor exercise opportunities. But we also got to make sure that we're reminding people, go get checked out. Go get your regular appointment. Make sure that if, you're, if your family's prone to heart disease, that you're getting checked regularly. Because it is the number one killer of people in our country. And so when I look at the data and you look at the money, $400 billion spent on heart disease annually, in, in the U.S. That includes health care costs, services, medicine, lost productivity. That's a significant amount. But you can't put a, a dollar amount on somebody's life. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of women in the U.S. Number one. You know, we talk a lot about uh, breast cancer, which we need to continue to talk about, but we can't forget heart disease. When you get your mammogram, go get your EKG. Go to the, heart, the cardiologist and get checked. One in three deaths a year, killing more women than any form of cancer combined. Cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of maternal death in the U.S. Heart disease is the number one killer of new moms and women who are also likely, more than men, to have uh, systematic car coronary heart disease. And doctors are less likely to refer women for testing, which is a statistic that shouldn't be true. So as we continue to bring out the messages, we are working with our health care systems to make sure that this is becoming a checklist that everybody does every year. It's not just your mammogram. You've got to go get your heart checked. That's why we're embarking on the blue zones. And as we move into our areas and across the city over the next three to couple months or so, over the next three weeks, I hope, we're going to be talking more about the blue zone, which is getting an assessment and how we turn our community into a healthy community because I want to see all of you together, all of you together when we're 100 years old sitting around laughing about the good old days, all right? Um, we don't need to continue to, to go backwards. We need to go forwards. So with that, on behalf of my city council members, which we do have uh, our newly elected uh, at-large, Tyler Bailey's here. I know several other council members want to be here. Our chiefs are here, both fire and police. I don't know. It's Aubrey somewhere. There he is. He's in the, in the sea of red. I can't see anybody. Of course, our city manager, who's always leading the red dress, not just because she believes in, in what this message, but, you know, she's a sister, too. You know? Yeah. I catch a few things these days, you know? A few things about time. Don't mess with it, Miss Benjamin. Okay. You, you, you never.
never know what I, I, I watch and see, you know. And of course, all our city assistant city managers here. I see Missy Gentry, Henry Simons, uh, Pam Benjamin. Who else is here? Jeff Palin. Oh, please recognize Jeff. He said he got just, just really tore up last year. He didn't have on a red tie. <laughs> Well, we, we can change that. We're just asking for some money and his face well, turns red. So it's all right. Very it's all right. true. But on behalf of the entire city council, and obviously as a city, I wanted to present this to the Heart Association, which is the National Heart Month, because this is, this is the first beat of the month. So let's, let's keep the message going. Mayor Rickman covered it all, I mean, all of the points, because I think when something's so personal to us, it's easy to demonstrate the passion for it. I think last year I shared with you all my own uh, journey with heart disease in my family, and I consider myself a survivor, and as you know, yeah. So, you know, he couldn't have hit the nail on the head better about with all the medical advances we have now. When I thought I was just having migraines, unfortunately, I had to learn that I was an AFib. And that first episode has led me down a path of, you know, beta blockers and blood thinners for life probably, but it's okay. I will do that if that means I am here and I am present for my daughter, my family, and others. So, ladies, particularly talking to the ladies, don't always assume the symptoms you might feel um, is just something to be dismissed because we're taking care of everybody else. Stop and, and check it out, for sure. And I'm gonna always be a big advocate for that. And the other reason is that the people around you then know I'm learning the more you know, you're willing to share. So my city team, they are always, you know, this job is, it's never stressful, right? But they are aware and always you hydrated, you need some water, what you doing, you're good. Because we have to take care of each other. And I appreciate our city family. I adore them and love them for that. So we've welcomed everybody. We're here together in support of these efforts to bring awareness to American Heart Association's Go Rent for Women movement in this fight against heart disease and stroke amongst women. February is National Heart Month, a time when all people, especially women, are encouraged to focus on their cardiovascular health. This month, the Division for Heart Disease and Stroke Prevention is encouraging women to listen to their hearts and speak up for their health. Women in the United States are experiencing unacceptable and avoidable heart-related illness and death, and nearly half of U.S. women do not recognize that heart disease is the leading cause of death for women. Throughout the month of February, in order to help increase awareness, red spotlights will be displayed on the front of City Hall, yay, in recognition of National Heart Month. And in an effort to engage our community and our city employees, our Public Relations Media and Marketing Department, in partnership with Drew Wellness Center, will be hosting the first Jump Start Your Heart Day party at Drew Wellness Center on February 10th from 11 to 2. We have to shout out Public Relations, Media Marketing, and Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you. The Jump Start Your Heart Day party will feature a variety of free activities, including family fun, relay races, Zumba, hit and yoga workouts, massages, music giveaways, and more. And there's no cost to participate, but registration will be required. And we'll share a QR code. I think it's in the bag that everyone will receive today. So we really encourage you all to join us next Saturday for that event. We also want to continue the efforts we made as a city team last year raising $9,000. I, I mean, we're gonna hit at least the $10,000 mark this year. Um, so city department should have received and all employees an email from me this morning encouraging them to create captains by department so we can make it a little fun and competitive because we want to participate in the Heart Walk this year even bigger and better than last year. And I also will have a page of my own that we are going to push out to raise funds for this very worthwhile endeavor. So, you know, I, um, I want us to all also remember 
you know, care, who is helping provide care for this effort, and our doctors here and nurses in the city of Columbia, Richland County. I see Councilwoman Barron here as well. I mean, we can't do this without good, adequate care and the providers out there. Mayor Rickman's wife is a pediatrician. We have lots of people we know that we lean into on these efforts. But, you know, I personally want to give a shout out today to Prisma Health. I see Regina's here with Prisma Health. Let's into Medical Center. Um, I know all of you have people in your lives that are impacted, so let's always uplift our professionals in the field who can provide us the care that we need. So with that, we will now hear from our Executive Director of the American Heart Association, Ms. Crystal Kirkland. I will steal one Oh, thing. yes, sir. Because yeah, my mother always told me, fix something when you mess up. I did not recognize our good friend and colleague at Richland County, Gretchen Barrett, who's here, who always supports every effort. We work on gun violence and everything else. And I, I would have felt miserable when I got downstairs if I hadn't fixed what I forgot. So thank you for being here, Gretchen, and thank you for being such a good partner in this community because you always put your community first, and we appreciate that. It is so lovely to see everyone in red, of course, the American Heart Association's favorite color. Hello, I am Crystal Kirkland, the Executive Director for the American Heart Association here in the Midlands. It is my honor to introduce Angelica Davis. Angelica is one of the American Heart Association's Women of Impact nominees for 2024. In November of 2022, Angelica gave birth to her third son, and soon after, her entire life changed. We're so grateful to have her here to tell us her remarkable story, and we appreciate your passion for helping us bring awareness to challenges around maternal health. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of new moms and two-thirds of those deaths could be prevented with proper access to care and equitable health. Angelica, your story is amazing, and especially today, we celebrate you. Please help me welcome Angelica Davis. Hey, y'all, how are y'all? Y'all look beautiful in your red. Um, excuse me, I'm trying not to talk so fast. Um, I'm nervous, but I'm gonna get through this. Um, so as she stated, um, I had a baby. A couple months later, I started to experience um, symptoms. One symptom I never experienced before. Um, I did experience shortness of breath, but I'm like, oh, it's just, you know, baby weight, I can get rid of that. Um, and then at nights when I would lay down, I couldn't breathe. It was almost like a drowning type feeling. And you know, I stayed up all night long, me and my son, and I used to say, okay, I'm gonna make appointments to go to urgent care. But by seven o'clock in the morning, it would subside. I'm like, okay, whatever, I can go back to sleep. And this happened every night, and I dreaded night times because, you know, I'm like, oh God, I can't sleep now. Um, until one day I was in my apartment, and I was going upstairs, and my son's um, grandmother called. And um, she's like, what are you doing? I said, I'm going up the stairs. She's like, you're out of breath. I'm like, yeah. She was like, you have fluid on your heart. I'm like, I don't. I'm a healthy person. I've always been healthy. Nobody in my family has any heart disease, disease at all. And um, she said, you should go see your doctor Monday. I said, no, I'm going to the emergency room tomorrow. And um, I went and lo and behold, it was fluid caused by something called postpartum cardiomyopathy. Um, and that's pretty much heart failure after you have a baby, which is very rare. And, um, you know, luckily, you know, they, and I was devastated. They was like, oh, girl, you'll be all right, because we give medicines. 96% of women that have it, they recover with medication. I wasn't so fortunate. They tried medication after medication, dosage after dosage, and please tell me if I'm talking too fast. Um, but they tried dosage after dosage, um, nothing happened. And what it is, it affected the, um, the squeezing of the heart, where it pumps, you know, blood. Mine started out at 35. The normal is like 50, somewhere along, 50%, somewhere along those lines. Um, and then as the days dwindled down, it got all the way down to like 20. So um, they said, okay, we're gonna put you on the list, um, you know, get you a new heart. But something in my spirit, when it started, I'm like, girl, you're gonna have to have a new heart. I'm like, okay, whatever. And so, um, you know, got on the list November 10th. 
I went to the doctor for a follow up on the 16th. I did not want to stay, so I'm like, act normal, act normal. And you know, she was about to write me a prescription and send me home. And I promise y'all, all I did was sit back in my chair and I was like, <sighs> she's like, no, we're gonna go ahead and meet you. I'm like, all I did was breathe. But luckily, um, like I said, got on the list. The 10th was admitted the 16th. I was told on the 20th that I had a heart, and on the 21st, they dumped it, and I'm here. So. <laughs> Um, to say the least, it, and I hate, I don't know, when I tell people, it was actually a good journey. Like, um, I have no complaints, smooth recovery. Um, I just, I just got a touch of um, steroid induced diabetes and a touch of asthma, but hey, what is that? So, um, <laughs> you know, but it went really great. My parents are supportive. But, and you know, today should be a day that I should be celebrating. We all should be celebrating. And I'm happy to be the Women of Impact nominee. And I did a dinner with the other um, nominees a couple nights ago, and they asked me what my why was. Today, my why has completely changed. It was educating women and making sure this does not happen. I found out today <laughs> um, a member of my own community passed almost a, a year ago to the exact same thing that I had. And unfortunately for her, the person that I spoke to today, she said it was just too late. And I'm like, excuse me, how, how was it too late? Nobody gave them information, so now it's personal. This is no longer, it's a why to educate women, but it's a why so we can stop this. Because it makes no sense for a child to have to grow up without a mom because it was caught too late. If we, we need to be educated, we need to be informed. Hey, doctor, I'm pregnant, congratulations. Postpartum, you know, depression, all that stuff. But let me tell you about a rare thing called um, postpartum cardiomyopathy. 4%, it happens in 4% of pregnancies. These are the symptoms. You're gonna have a healthy pregnancy. But I'm just letting, as a doctor, I'm just letting you know, just so you know, you're aware of the symptoms. I wasn't aware of the symptoms. Sadly to say, she wasn't either. So. How do we fix this? I'm going to bring awareness. It's not gonna happen again. Our doctors are going to let us know. And if they don't let you know, I'm here. I'm gonna let you know. Because I don't want this to happen. Kids shouldn't have to live without their moms. So that's my why. Um, thank you all for listening. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank y'all for coming out. And girl, okay, you got this. You got it. Yes. We hear you and we see you, so great points. And so glad to see you so healthy and pretty and vibrant. Thank you. Yeah. We are at a period for closing remarks. Councilman Bailey, do you have anything you wanna share? Okay, just wanted to ask. Um, also, Galena Alford, who is our Payment Center Administrator and I always tell her, she's like, my mom always says, a little bit of leather well put together. She's so tiny, but she is mighty. And she's always a big part of our efforts with American Heart Association at the city um, and, and making sure that some of the things we do contribute towards the heart walk. And so this year we're also doing a t-shirt campaign. Is that right? You wanna come real quick and rally the troops on that? Hello, everybody's so beautiful in their red. Well, this year, um, we did last year a t-shirt um, contest, and this year we were doing one for the city employees. We're asking all city employees to send in, you know, designs for t-shirts, and then we're gonna pick one, and then, I don't know if I told you or not. Oh, Miss okay. Wilson is going to walk down Main Street and oh, display oh. the design. <laughs> I'm here for it, Lena. Okay. <laughs> so, we have a t shirt contest that we started last week and it goes through the 5th of this month. So, once we pick the design, we're going to get the t-shirts from Ms. Wilson and the winner, and she's going to walk down Main Street from Washington to Gerbay Street, I think it is. Oh, okay. But, we, but we'll let her know. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to uh, pick the design, and that design is going to be on the t-shirts. 
Well, last year we just had the design for all city employees, but this year it's going to be for the public and city employees. So we're excited about that. Well, I truly get my marching orders. <laughs> yes, I'll be ready. Well, it is time, Ms. Yutzi, to prepare for our, oh, yes, ma'am. Did you, I'm sorry, did you want to have a comment? Please come. No, 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 no. Absolutely. I'm being bossed by the Huh? I said I'm being bossed by the city. Will you come? No. Absolutely. So, uh, good afternoon. Again, I'm Gretchen Barron of Richland County Council, and we are partnering with the City Recreation Commission to host our luncheon at the end of the month. It's the 28th at the Busby. Busby. I never say that correct. Uh, Busby uh, Recreation Facility. And so you have to register. Last year it was standing room only. And so we want you all to, to come and have lunch with us. Everything is free. We have some speakers. Uh, our good friends will, will be there again. But yeah, come out, register. Like many of you all, I have a personal story. Uh, my son reminded me of this. And I don't know how I forgot it, but my, my youngest son, Prez, or Hilton, we, um, I went in a cardiac arrest having him. Yeah, and I didn't, I, I don't know how I could forget something like that, but as I was getting dressed this morning, he reminded me, he said, Mama almost killed you. <laughs> and I'm still paying for it, but anyway, come to the lunch. <laughs> Come to the luncheon, uh, but please register. You can register on Eventbrite. Uh, we'd love to have lunch with you at the end of the month. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, we have lots of great events coming up, clearly. We are putting the attention where it deserves to be. And with that, we are ready for our community photo session, because y'all look fabulous, so let's get it done. <laughs>